started here so we're not running too late since we got 10 samples welcome everyone i'm blake from bourboner this is the bourboner live review or live tasting for the blind uh blind tasting this is episode number four i send out all samples all samples have been purchased by me uh send it to fellow whiskey bloggers reviewers writers enthusiasts and let them sample it blind let them put it, put in their notes they don't know what's coming uh aside from it being whiskey and that's it then we come on here and we review it and uh talk about the notes talk about the bottles and we see see what kind of uh, interesting things pop up so let's kind of go around the table introduce ourselves um so brian if you want to go ahead and get us started and introduce sure, thank yourself you. sure appreciate it blake uh hey everyone i'm brian Hera. i'm with sip and corn you can find me at, at uh, twitter most of the time at sip and corn in the in the blog of the same name and uh, I'm ready to be embarrassed and humbled. And I see this is all rye now. I came in with a bourbon uh, mind frame, so I'm in trouble. I tell you right now. But I, uh, but in in mem in commemoration of this, I decided this is the day to finish my 25 year will it rye, uh, since we're all about rye. And I'll uh, I I've been waiting for an occasion, and this is just right. I appreciate it. Crystal, go ahead. Um, I, uh, I work for Lizardville in, in Cleveland. We, uh, we house something like 400, 500 different bottles of whiskey. Um, I'm a little bit of a scotch fanatic. I love my rye. I love my bourbon. I earned myself a seat on the Cleveland Bourbon Club. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with that, which is how I got the connection with Blake here. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really excited you guys said rye because I, I thought they were all rye. I love rye, or at least high rye bourbons. Um, I did save myself like a little just kind of quarter ounce of each one for this, for this tasting. So that's what I'll be doing here. Just but, to revisit. Yeah. yeah. I told, I told Ryan Lentz, I said, it's kind of becoming an unwritten rule that I have to have a Cleveland, Cleveland bourbon club member on each blind tasting. I think with him uh ed uh, now you so yeah we got to keep keep it going i guess all right eric you're up next so i'm eric lee um you'll find me on instagram under ron burbandy and then occasionally on the bourbon r facebook trolling blake as hard as i can <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's the one i get like screenshots from people and they're like man is this guy serious i'm like don't worry i know him it's not a big deal all right jonah round us out uh, hey, I'm Jonah Flicker. Uh, I'm a freelance writer uh, based in New York. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Gustatory Online. And I write about whiskey and other spirits and food and travel for a whole bunch of different outlets, including CNN, USA Today, um, Men's Journal, Esquire, and a bunch of other places. So thanks for having me. This is really fun. I've never done a blind tasting before, and I was completely convinced that one of them was an Irish whiskey, which clearly it's not. So I'm curious to find out which one that is, but this sounds like a lot of fun. So thanks. Well, thank you all for coming. I know it can be a little uh, daunting of a task to get 10 samples and then have to do notes and reviews and everything else. So I appreciate your willingness to kind of, uh, you know, lay the pride down a little bit and just taste it blind. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you don't know already, these are 10 samples. Everything was a rye whiskey. Uh, kind of the idea behind it was I wanted to hit the high end rye whiskeys as well as the low end rye whiskeys. Uh, there's a little bit in between, but I tried to keep the proof pretty balanced. So everything's between 90 and 100 proof, nothing over 100 proof. To, to, to keep it somewhat a continuity between all the samples. So we're going to start off with number 10. And so, generally, what we do is we'll announce the sample let you talk about your notes a little bit if you don't have them i can i can send them over to you but uh so just kind of talk about them a little bit and we'll go from there so number 10 is sample l a and it's woodford reserve rye so woodford mm. reserve rye got a average score of 63.25 and if you're unfamiliar with the scoring go ahead and check out bourboner.com on the uh the blind tasting post and and you can see but um it, it's a pretty strict scoring in hold on, i should have had that up but i'm just going to read it um really quick so so everyone watching has an idea of um 
you know, what we're looking at, which while I get into that, Brian, let's go ahead and start on your notes with, with a uh, sample LA. This was my second to bottom. There's one that I liked less than this, but this is one of my three did not finish marked. This one to me, both uh, particularly with the aroma was turpentine and, and pine. And then I wrote uh, uh, pine and bad gin for my, for my uh, flavors and no redeeming qualities. And it was this, this one was was awful to me. I mean, I and I, I have had Woodford Rye only one other time, and I went into it with pretty low expectations, knowing what it was, um, but thought it was all right. Um, so I'm already uh, seeing on the blind here that this was not some uh, ninety dollar craft whiskey. It was something that a lot of folks buy. Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, for sure. Um, and this is one, it, it always pops up or never fails. Like some bottle that I've recommended to people is like, yeah, here's a good entry level bottle or, you know, one that's available ends up just getting blasted and terrible. And then I'm like, man, I feel bad for all the people I told to go spend $50 on this. <laughs> Crystal, what'd you think of this one? Um, This was definitely on my lower end. I wrote down dry erase marker, dusty, yeasty. Um, it kind of reminded me of peach iced tea and like, yeah, I, I was not a fan of it. Um, I, I forget what I said it was. I know I was wrong, but I'm glad to know because like I didn't go with anything crazy or special for my guesses. I just kind of stuck with like kind of mid-range stuff you can you should be able to find on the shelf so i i gave it a 74 overall and yeah it's it's it was not my favorite it was definitely crystal do you know it was a rye i i figured i knew everything was a had some rye to it yeah um i only actually guessed one was a straight rye um, the rest of them, I, I guess, were bourbons that were high rye content, yeah. but I, I knew that there was rye in there. Eric, you want to talk about your notes a little bit? Sure. Um, I forget what my guess was, but I'm sure it was pretty bad. Yours um, was scotch, but missing smokiness. Yeah. So um, actually on the nose, I was actually pretty, pretty pumped about it because I got that banana bread smell that you get with 1792 a lot on that foolproof. So that was the first, first note I got, but then like I went back to revisit it and I got black tea and I hate black tea. So then I went in and tasted, I got like strong peatiness is kind of what I got out of it. And at that moment I, I was thinking monkey shoulder. I don't know if you guys have ever had that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I didn't get any smokiness out of it at all. So then I just like, this is a wash and rated it as a 61 and said, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, what'd you think? I, you know, I, I gave this a 72. It wasn't terrible, but the, I think the main thing I was getting from this was a lot of wood. I thought the nose was really slight, really mild, and it almost had this balsa wood, uh, these balsa wood notes to me that were kind of reminding me of one of those little planes that you used to make when you were a kid and, mm -hmm. you know, throw out that kind of, how that, that, that uh, odor gets in your mouth when you're, when you're smelling balsa wood. Um, it's very thin, the liquid, um, a little bit of dry spice, a little hint of sweet. And I actually was guessing, looking at my notes here, that this was like some small craft distillery, maybe a two-year-old rye, you know, that was that was sort of where I was at with this. But the but the main thing that it was hitting me was was this woodiness to it. It's interesting. So pretty much, well, three of you all said, uh, let's see, Brian said craft, horrible. <laughs> uh, uh, Crystal, you said, yeah, very mature, metallic, and Jonah also said young. And I don't, maybe it is young, but I'm thinking it. I believe it's like six, six years or so. But hey, if if the taste isn't there, it's not there. All right, let's move on to number two. So this is actually one of the biggest discrepancies I've seen between um, whiskeys and a blind tasting. So uh, sample number nine well, ranking number nine is lg and lg is bullet rye hmm. and it received really? a score of 67.5 so 
Uh, Jonah, go ahead and talk about this one a little bit because <clears throat> Crystal and Brian are going to fight it out towards the end about <laughs> what this is really. Is. So. Well, I I could I knew this was a rye. This one I I kind of was describing it as a very weak, thin, almost watered down flavor rye, kind of a limp a limp rye. It just wasn't kind of hitting the sweet spots for me. Um, I gave it a 65 and I was guessing Templeton. I was thinking it was some kind of, you know, younger MGP rye. Um, and I guess that's close, you know? Yeah, well, that's, 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 I did tell, I, I kind of leak a little bit of information out just cause I can't help hold on, but hold on to this. I told Jonah, I said, man, you nailed pretty much two of them. So we have, this was the first one where he said redemption Templeton, you know, it's that MGP source at 95% rise. So I, I called that a good guess. Um, Eric, what'd you think? Yeah. I mean, I didn't mind it. Um, the finish is what lost me on it. You know, it, it was just too short and none of the, none of the flavors really, you know, were full and balanced in that fashion. So I rated yeah. it as a 70. So I probably averaged out that, that average, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I'm ready to see the sparks fly. Let's go Chris on last. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to go ahead and say this and then whoever wants to jump in, Crystal loved it. She, she rated it a 90. Brian hated it and he rated it a 40, maybe the lowest score Dang. I've ever seen in the, the bourbon of line tasting. So that's a drain pour score right there. Jump in first, you know, go. Wow. He actually, I just got to throw this out there. He'll, he'll, I'm sure say it too, but the guest was craft barrel gin, um, which, you know, apparently he got a lot of that botanical and all that kind of stuff in there. So, um, Brian, what'd you think? I think we know it, what you think. I just was, was <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you know what I think it, it, it was I, I just on the know this pine salt kind of kind of aromas. So when I when I, I I have an aversion to the 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 uh even is on the verge of lemon pledge, I'm all right with it, but once it transitions for me to pine salt, that's that's where I lose it, whether it's a whatever kind of whiskey it is. And on the taste I I could See it trying to have a little fruitiness with the with the pepper in it with the peppery flavors but then it had this weird fish oil flavor to me and then uh then like eric said it, the the finish was just so short i was hoping for some redeeming quality there and I, and I just didn't get it and i i was getting all these like like blake mentioned all these botanicals and it was like a barrel aged a craft barrel aged gin was my was my guess and i'm not a gin fan and so everything about it was just layering on top of each other to to where I just I, it was it was a drain pour if I had it. So Crystal, I'm interested. Talk to me. It's funny because I actually don't think that the finish is that short. I think it kind of hangs on and lingers. I think that the spice to the finish is short. <laughs> but I think after the spice, that's when the other flavors start to come through. And it is extremely botanical to me. I get so much rose on this. Like it's it like just straight rose hips. And I used to get these rose candies from the West side market that they really remind me of, but like, I, I love it. I think that, um, I get a, a honeydew as well as lemon and orange out of it. And the rye on it just carries through so much. And that's what I like about rye is like, it's there. You can't really hide it. It's like, it's all those baking spices and the caraway and the ginger and the cinnamon and, I don't know. Like I, I think the mouthfeel on it is great, and I think that may be one of the reasons why I like it so much. Because to me, ryes have a little bit more of like this oily weight to them, where it's a little bit like richer in the mouthfeel. And I, I don't know. I think it's great. So what I really like about this is both of you described it very similarly. Actually, yeah. you know, with hitting the botanicals and. Uh, so so Brian calls it overwhelming pine saw. Crystal calls it um, lemon custard. Yeah, lemon custard, <laughs> some pine, uh, roses and rye, more roses, more rye. So it's very similar. You know, you're both describing the whiskey, but then you just come to the conclusion of no, nah, I hate this, or oh right. man, I love this. So it just kind of shows in the blind tasting how much of this is subjective. You know, you like what you like. So uh, people enjoy fighting over it and but you know, taste is sub subjective at the end of the day. All right, next up is sample TR, and it received a rating of 
and TR is ah, Knob Creek Rye. Really? Wow. Okay. Yep. Mm. And, and so this is another one. Man, it just falls into that category of of um i've suggested it i think it's a good pour for the money you know what's knob creek rye 35 40 bucks but um didn't do so well so while you think about your uh tasty notes i'm going to go through the rating scale really quick so basically anything zero to 60 is terrible bottle should be destroyed 61 to 70 bad flavor is off as a whole but shows a few redeeming notes uh, 71 to 80 would be decent. Could drink in a pinch, but probably more of a mixer. 81 to 85 is good. I want a bottle on my shelf as a daily drinker. 86 to 90 is really good. Everyone should buy a bottle. 91 to 95 is uh, great. This is phenomenal. I'd be willing to spend whatever it takes to get a bottle. And 96 to 100 is perfect. Uh, this is everything you want in whiskey, and it has no flow. So the grading scale is steep. Um, so take take everything with a grain of salt. I remember the first one we did, people were like, well, they're just ridiculous with their ratings. It's like, well, we're kind of grading on a higher scale than I would typically. Um, so 68.75 for Knob Creek Rye, that, that puts it smack dab, well, kind of to the top of bad flavor is off as a whole, but shows a few redeeming notes. Um, so let's see who's up. Let's, let's go with Eric. What'd you think of sample tr yeah i mean i don't think it's that bad um you know i i like the nose on it and i think this is probably the one where i got the most pear i think there was another one that i got a lot of pear out of the nose and so it's like that little bit of sour sweetness to it and you know i'm revisiting it here and i'm getting the same same pear nose off of it and then the finish to me was a long oak Mm -hmm. um, and I really, I prefer those flavors to it. So, I mean, I really was a seven to four. The only problem, the only thing that I had against it is that, um, the second visit that I had of it is almost like a little bit of a soured alcohol burn, if you will. Um, which that could be coming through in, in the freaking paint fumes for me, spray painting Mason jars <laughs> earlier that day. I don't know, but, uh, Hold on, let's go back to that. What, what kind of arts and crafts were you doing that day, spray painting? Uh, oh, you'll jars? see Saturday, my friend. Oh, you'll okay. see Saturday. All right. Um, all right, Jonah, what'd you think of Knob Creek Rye? I, I have to say, this is driving me crazy because I, when I was first tasting it, I was like, this has got to be something from Jim Beam. I was telling, and then I was like, no, there's this other sample that's definitely Jim Beam. And so there's not going to be two Jim Beams. <laughs> and so I convinced myself that this was wild turkey of some sort and and but you know the immediate thing i wasn't really necessarily picking up um picking up as a rye but that i always struggle with how to describe that that very signature jim beam flavor like a sort of nutty yeasty flavor that's what that's the first thing that comes through um for me on this i, I thought it was you know thin a little spicy but that just you know when i when i'm nosing it right now I'm getting that again, and uh, and I, you know, I feel it. Well, it wasn't, wouldn't have been right necessarily, but I, uh, it, it's just interesting to me the that yeast right um, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like with I find with you know Jim Beam products, whatever they are, that that for me, that's sort of the first thing that always strikes me, whether it's you know Knob Creek or Booker's or regular old Jim Beam. Um, and so I was picking that up, but that predominantly that, and not so much any. Uh, strong, you know, fruity, spicy rye flavor here. So, yeah. So to your credit, you did have in your tasting notes. Uh, this had me thinking Jim Beam again at first. So you know, you. Oh, you I did put that in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, it, redeeming grace there. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Brian, what'd you think of sample TR? Well, I was a swing and a miss then. As close as Jonah you got, I was a swing and a miss on this. I. I did a 10 rye blind tasting about a year ago and Knob Creek was the surprise out of the 10. Uh, I had like eight people do it and uh, it, it was the, ended up being the highest value if you're to look at price and, and how high it rated. Uh, this one, um, I, I thought on the aromas, it was competing between good things like summer grass and old barn those are things that i like in in my aromas but then i got this model airplane plane glue in the nose too and and this kind of chlorine flavor on uh, in the taste and 
so I, I ended up rating this uh, my third lowest. So I guess same spot where it, where it lands here. I liked it more um, and did like it more last time I had it. Interesting. All right, Crystal, sample TR. Um, I did actually find the nose to be a little redeeming on it. It's got a really nice peaches and cream with a heavy vanilla bean, but then it started to get a little dirty to me. And by dirty, I mean like actually like wet soil or like wet wood. Um, it is a little nutty and maybe a little sulfurous. This is definitely one of my my lowest score of all of them. Um, it just it tastes really musty and youthful to me, and it's it feels a little thin. And the the, the finish on it is really corny. I think I get that from a lot of bean pro just that real strong graininess, graininess and kind of like Jonah said, not exactly sure. To me, it's always like a wet cardboard nose on bean products. I I feel like that always just always just sticks out to me, um, which is interesting to see. But um, yeah, just another one of those that I was a little disappointed. In. I'm gonna have it, to go wet some cardboard because I mean. <laughs> Come like on, you never moved in the rainy day. Jeez. You guys have never moved in the rain. All right. Next up, which is uh let's see, in seventh place is sample MA with an average score of 69.5. This is baby Sazerac. It's a Sazerac six-year-old. Oh man. Which, whew, man, I feel like I just thought this tasting was going to blow it away with the lower level whiskeys. Um, but to my surprise, a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got some really refined palates. They're just getting <laughs> aggressive on some of my favorite daily drinkers. Um, so, Eric, I know you're a big Baby Saz fan, uh, mainly in cocktails, I guess, but. Talk about this one a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I, I normally use Baby Saz for my Manhattans. I mean, that's my go-to. Um, sometimes I'll go with the barrel proof, um, but I use it all the time. And if I'm running short, man, all you people love this stuff and I can't find it anymore. But, um, you know, off the nose, I got some heavy caramel, which is kind of odd for a rye, I guess. But, um, I mean, that's what I got. Um, it was short dry i i caught the rye in the finish uh, that little spice little cinnamon taste off the end but it was short so it's it's not something that i i prefer neat um so kind of goes with my drinking style with it anyway you know, so it makes sense to me that throw a little sweet vermouth kochi in there with a little bitters throwing a cherry i made it <laughs> call it a night yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right brian what'd you think uh, this one threw me for a little bit of loop. I, I had it rated, I guess, 71. So I was a little bit higher than the than the average, but basically just on the uh, on the edge of your of your scale. Um, let's see, that puts it at decent. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it it tasted a little young to me. It was I got some of the same sweetness that Eric just talked about, um, and I got a little bit of a what i wrote was a nail polish undertone to it so is i got this conflict between the sweet and then that that undertone and that that kind of threw it off for me a little bit uh as well i mean it was it was fine um but you know the, the 71 is you know I'll, I'll drink it it's decent um but not my favorite this is also one that i thought i liked more than than i uh did on at least the blind sample yeah, no, I agree. And I had no guess on what it was. No, I couldn't guess at all. <laughs> just just left it blank. I like it. I, now I you said no blank. guess against my better judgment. <laughs> right. Um, Crystal, what did you think of the baby says? Um, it it was one of my lower ones, but like I, I didn't really hate any of these. I got a lot of hair on the nose, which I really liked. Um, I got some like apricots and and some tree bark and you know i got that spicy ginger um that's indicative of a rye but yeah i i gave this one a 75. i do find that the spice note on the palate is actually pretty subtle 
but which is funny because I always don't I always claim that I don't particularly care for Sazerac six. Um but yeah, I didn't I did not hate any of these. Extremely hate any of these. This is on the lower end of all of them for me. But Looks like you're too it's, nice. You know, yeah. when you think about it, it is, you know, typically a $30, $35 bottle. So most of these notes and ratings, I'm okay with a $35 bottle. It's just the fact that you can't see it on the shelf anymore that you're like, okay, what are we really chasing now? Um, so Jonah, I, I saved you for last on this one because <laughs> in a first in the bourbon or blind tasting, uh, urine was used as a note. <laughs> But I just yeah. want to make it clear. So I'm like the guy who, if you go to a potluck dinner, I'm not eating your food if I don't know what your kitchen standards are like. So I keep it very clean. And uh, so there was no cross contamination possible in this thing. I don't know where the urine note came from. I just want How to, do you know what urine tastes well, like? Well, that's my disclaimer. No, that was a, I, yeah. I, I rarely I drink urine. So, I, you, know, uh, I, you know, maybe it was this sort of well first of all this one totally threw threw me for a loop because i'm i'm tasting this and immediately sort of like an irish whiskey palette is jumping out at me almost uh something with sort of apple or cider notes maybe something that like a craft whiskey that was finished in a cider barrel or something like that that's that's what i was reading here uh kind of a bright woody nose a little bit of a sharp spice but like a younger whiskey but i couldn't uh get off this uh this sort of Irish, it was leading me down this Irish whiskey path. And um, the urine thing, I think I, uh, there was, there's a little bit of this ammonia uh, kind of odor that, that is coming up on the nose for me and maybe a little bit on the palate too. And uh, I, that, that just was the first thing that came to my mind. But that's, this is, I gave it a 73, so clearly the urine wasn't a complete turnoff for me. <laughs> I feel like, though, like once you hit that flavor note in a tasting, you're like, well, I can't do anything much better than a 73. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's really interesting to me to find out what this one was. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of crazy. <laughs> interesting. That's good stuff. Hey, All the right. good news is, is it maybe people watch this and they stop buying it. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. which, so I actually right. don't have a bottle of that behind me tonight because I finished a bottle the, a few nights last weekend or something. And I swear my wife threw it out. She swears she did. And so I, it's missing. And then I knew I have an, an op, a couple unopened ones too. And I like looked or searched everywhere. I couldn't find it. So apologize for not having the bottle in the picture, but I think everyone will be okay with that. Um, I came right. over and I thieved them. That's what I did. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. So, <laughs> uh, so number six in the tasting is sample A J. And it got an average rating of 70.75. And it is also the cheapest bottle in the whole tasting. It is Jim Beam Rye. Is. So what's that run? I think I paid like 20 bucks for <laughs> 20. it or something. Yeah. Yeah. 19. I think like when Dixie gave me $2 off for some, for some reason. So I may have paid 17 or 18. So AJ is Jim Beam Rye. Um, so Jonah, you actually got this one. I'm gonna call it right because you said distiller's cut or something Jim Beam. So talk about it. What was it that really stood out that you just said, hey, this is a Jim Beam product? Well, again, it's kind of like what I was talking about before where Jim Beam, uh, particular, particularly uh, when it's just the, the sort of core range of Jim Beam always immediately jumps out at me with that yeasty nutty corny nose on the palate I, the, I like your wet cardboard uh note actually that's that's interesting and, and i like you know most of those jim beam products and and so some of those funky notes kind of can be appealing if there's a time and a place for it this one though um the the rye was not jumping out at me at all that it was jim beam rye but i and i was thinking maybe distiller's cut since that's a, a you know a new release but but I was pretty positive that this was Jim Beam, and I gave it a 75, um, which is probably actually what I would, if I knew it was Jim Beam Rye, that's probably the same score I would give it. Um, you know, it's good in a pinch, and uh, it'll make for an okay cocktail, but it's, you know, not something I'm gonna, you know, look for too hard, but. Yeah. Yeah. Good news is you don't have to look too hard, because it's probably right. <laughs> for a bar. <laughs> yeah. 
Crystal, what do you think of the uh, Jim Beam Rye? Uh, this was in my bottom three. I gave it a 74. It has a very like refined sugar taste to it, like straight, like just white sugar, like a spoonful. Mm. Um, I got a lot of hay and corn and straw off the top and a little bit of black tea notes. It has a really interesting texture to me. And almost again, I think this one felt a little bit metallic again. And it does have it does have a weird creamy mouthfeel, which I almost found endearing. And I didn't want to hate on it too bad, but it was yeah. Again, I didn't completely hate anything, but this was in the bottom three for me. It's a little ashy too. I think yeah, I, I think ashy is a good way to describe some Jim Beam products. I, I, I get that from a couple different of the Jim Beam products. Um, not as much as like the high rise stuff, but definitely on the Jim Beam line, I get that. Um, I see that. Brian, what'd you think? Yeah, I, I was hoping that Jonah was going to say this was the one that he thought was the uh, Irish whiskey because I, <laughs> I and, and maybe I'm maybe what he's calling yeasty and what Crystal's saying is, is hay is what I was interpreting as barley because uh, I was getting a, a lot of malted barley on, on the flavors. Um, and so that, that totally threw me on, on what this was. Um, I, I really liked the nose on it. Um, I thought it had that furniture polish that I, that I liked. that's on the verge of being oak, but it's more furniture polish than oak. Um, to it, it was, it was smoky. I, I really dug the, the nose. Um, I was fine with the flavors. Uh, the, the finish fell off pretty quickly for me. Uh, so I gave it a, let's see, a, a 71. So pretty close to, to the average. And, and I don't think this is one uh, that I've ever had before. Um, at least that I never I had a Jim Beam ever. Rye. Yeah, never had the normal Jim Beam Rye. Not even in the yellow mustardy bottle. That's <laughs> not even, in the, yeah, not even the old mustard Which yellow. It's funny whenever I was going to the store. Um, to grab some some of these bottles i'm like somebody told the, all the brands that hey green makes people think rye and grassy and spicy and because every single bottle is green yeah. jim bean it's now green knob creek it's green green back label woodford reserve green green bullet rye Yep, you guessed it. It's green. <laughs> it's like I don't know if they're all using the same um, what would that be design firm or something, <laughs> but it is. But anyways, that was a, that was a quick aside. But Eric, what do you think of Jim Beam Rye? You know, I like Jonah. I got a lot of those grainy notes on the nose. Um, I didn't think that it was overpowering, so I immediately thought that it was young. You know, at that point, um, you know, and that held true with the finish as well. Little, I got a little more alcohol out of out of this one than any other ones, which again could just become come down to age on it. Um, but that ashy that ashy taste that you're talking about, I kind of I kind of equate that to chalky almonds is what I put down on it. You know, it's you kind of I don't, I don't know how to really describe it, but between chalky almonds and ashy, I think is a is the best way to try. You know, it kind of leaves that weird kind of residue in your mouth a little bit, I guess. Almost like you just went outside and cut a two by four and then inhaled with your mouth. So you're saying you've never smelled wet cardboard, but you've gone and inhaled a two by four before? Okay. <laughs> well, you cut it with the saw, so you get the saw dust. There you go. I'm going to count it. Not a construction worker. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, neither am I. Yeah. No calluses. I actually have right. one now. Yeah. So now we're moving into the top five. So kind of how I broke these out, I would say uh, there's there's kind of the lower rung on the price range. Five samples in the lower rung, five samples in the price, or five samples in the higher price rung. Um, unfortunately for the buyers, all five high end bottles scored in the top five. Um, so we do have a big surprise still left, but. Um, yeah, it was just interesting. So, you know, that kind of goes to say there is a little bit of uh, <clears throat> quality in price, at least in these rye samples, which I guess that's kind of what you want to see. You know, if you spend more than $100 on a bottle, you hope it's going to be good. Um, here's what's interesting. So next up is sample DB at number five. 
71.25. So if you're doing the math, that's 0.5 higher than Jim Beam Rye. And DB is wow, Victor's wow. ten year rye. Wow, so that's oh. seven. That's a twenty seventeen bottle. And actually, a bottle that that I love, to be honest. Um, so let me scroll down to my notes for DB. Um, yeah, so it was kind of all across the board um, on this. So uh, Brian and Jonah, you guys both scored it a 70 based on this. So Brian, why don't you start us off on this one? Uh, sure. This one, this one I liked and I ended up docking on the finish. Um, the finish was, was too short for me. Um, but on the aromas, I loved the, the baking spices. Uh, this is one where I got some pear in. I'm interested to see if Crystal found pear in this one too. Uh, but I got pear and I got some caramel, but, I, but I really was digging the baking spices on, on the nose. Um, I got a little bit of, uh, a mint in the, in the taste, which I, I always like it when I get a mint kicker. Uh, in in a whiskey, but it was nice and earthy, and I, I had some tobacco flavors, so I was really liking it, and then was disappointed in the in the finish, and that's why I ended up uh, lowering it from what I may have done just on the nose and the in the taste. So, not to steal Crystal's uh, review, but so she also has. There's like no finish. My my mouth feels left dry and empty. So, Crystal, what'd you think of this one? Uh, this was in my top three. I, I scored this one an 80. Um, the nose, I got a really rich caramel sweetness to it, but then it got really earthy and mushroomy and meaty. And like, I got like a cigar box, like full of cigars, like, like mm. um, the taste on it. I got a little red hot cherry right off the, off the front. And to me, that's where all the flavor was. It was, it was all up front. Um, the middle was pretty thin, and again, like the the finish, I said was dry and airy. I did not pick up pear on this. Nuts. I got chocolate. I got a lot of chocolate cocoa nibs. Um, I did get a little bit of that minty miss that you're talking about. It was a little bit bitter too in the middle. It was like kind of spicy and then bitter, and then it was it was then it was gone. But I did. I I I liked it. I liked the nose best on it, and then um, kind of like my overall score was pretty high. But I I I like the mushroominess. I like the meat. <coughs> yeah. No. I I think it 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 has a lot of that. And whenever I taste it and kind of review it, I get like a lot of like black tea and kind of like a peach tea kind of thing. Um, so it's interesting to see everyone else's. Jonah, what'd you think of this sample? It's, this is another really interesting one to me. Uh, it's a rye that I thought that I really, really liked. Um, right. And uh, I gave it a 70, which is uh, getting getting towards the, the dark side there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was getting, so what really threw me off is I'm getting this rich caramel fruity nose, which was sort of appealing. I'm tasting it, getting a syrupy texture, um, nice syrupy, almost cherry flavor. I think Crystal maybe mentioned that too. Um, and then this, there's this like, I think I described it as a barrel finish sheen that was kind of coming through. And I was like, is this some whiskey that has like a wine barrel finish or something? There's something, you know, it was kind of uh, making me think of those uh, collaboration uh, releases that came out a couple months ago. Um, there was the, uh, the brandy finish and, the, and the, some other wine finish from the Bardstown and um, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the brandy. Um, it's a uh, brandy distillery in Louisville. Yeah. Uh, Copper King. King. Copper King. Yeah. yeah Copper and King. King. So it was, it was almost, to me. <laughs> it was almost making me think maybe it was one of those there was. And so I think ultimately what I was saying is it doesn't completely sit right with me. It doesn't completely drink right. Um, not terrible, but I'm, I'm pretty shocked that this was Michter's 10. Um, I think I guessed maybe it was, I, I, I was thinking I would be wrong about the collaboration, so I went with an Orphan Barrel release. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think age is a really tough thing to taste blind, and I think that shows up in a lot of these different releases. Um, you know, you, 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 when you're looking at it, you know it's 10 years old or maybe a little bit older, depending on the barrels they used. 
um, you kind of you kind of perceive it differently, I think. But then when you're tasting it blind, it's like, man, is that harshness or is that you know more of that oak that I'm tasting coming through? So um, Eric actually had his pick was Jalen Ramsey. So Eric and I are both from Jacksonville. So if you're not <laughs> watching the Jaguars right now, you are missing out. But <laughs> That's right. Aside from it being Jalen Ramsey, Eric, what would you think of Michter's tenure? You know, I didn't really have a lot for this one. I think that I even, you know, when I first tried it, I just kind of put it off to the side because all I could, the only thing that I could really pick out of it was just, it was basically a spice bomb to me. I mean, it kind of overpowered me a little bit at the at the finish to where I was just like, yeah, screw it, I'm not going to drink this again kind of thing. Um, but, yeah. And it goes well, you know, you had an initial DB, defensive back, Jalen Ramsey, a little <laughs> spice bomb out there in his mouth and shutting people down. Yeah. So the letters are actually in this one, it's all uh, initials for, well, my family and then all my nieces and nephews. So uh, I like to switch it up every time because I read a story that was like, hey, if you label them one, two, three, four, five, it can sometimes throw people off and they'll automatically think number one's the best. So I try to just do random as random as I possibly can. Uh, that, random enough that I can still track it in my own mind. But yeah, so DB would be uh, my wife's first name and initial, not defensive back Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> but see, the thing is, is you, you've done that before. You've done the name thing. So I was trying to go through and pick all the names and all I got was MK. I can't believe it didn't get DB. You didn't even I get apologize because uh, yeah, you should BL. Come it's on, not Larson. Jeez. <laughs> All right, it, next up, number four, which is going to be a surprise to some. So, uh, sample number four is or ranking number four is sample JK, and it came in with a score of seventy eight, and that would be Sazerac eighteen year uh, from twenty fifteen. So we're talking pre tank. Sazerac 18. If you ask me on the street, I would say it's one of my favorite rye whiskeys up there for my favorite whiskeys. And it came in at a 78, which if you're following along at home would be in the decent category. So um, this is another one I think age just age throws people off. And the, the crazy thing is there's not a lot of disparity between um between the no, the the rankings here so uh there was a 73 two seventy nines and an 81 so it wasn't like there was one one ranking that was weighing it way down so eric let's start with you because you had the lowest with 73 yeah i'm surprised um you know you know i see that bottle i'm like holy crap I definitely screwed this one up, but um, <laughs> but I, I don't know. You didn't screw it up because you tasted. Yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm not. I was telling Jonah earlier. I'm not really one for rise, so which makes this tasting even even more fun for me. But um, you know, I I had a short finish on it. Um, you know, I this is the other one that I got that pear, a light pear <laughs> off the nose, a little bit of uh, cherry, and then uh, just all spice, um, some vanilla bean, and it was just short for me. And I guess. If it if it has a short finish, it kind of loses me a little bit. Um, but I did like the nose, and you know I think I even guessed that this was four was a small batch. Yikes! But uh, <laughs> yeah, I got it at seventy three. I mean, All right, rating, so, so Jonah, you had the highest rating with um, so you were on the ride kick here, but you had an eighty one uh, something high west. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, reveal. I, uh, so yeah, I was getting this, uh, I actually forgot that I put that in for my guess here, uh, for initially, I think, I, well, so I was thinking that it was something sourced maybe from MGP or ADL or something. And I was getting this real strong fruity rye nose, uh, and tasting it now I'm getting this again, this real, uh, menthol flavor in here, which is not unpleasant, but I find as it, as you're kind of letting it sit in your mouth and on your tongue, I'm getting kind of a very minty menthol flavor. Um, uh, I was said, I think it tastes like it's spent at least four years in a barrel, but I was thinking probably older than that, you know, maybe closer to eight or 10, a higher priced rye just from the, the taste and the, and the, um, 
the look of it and the the I this is interesting because it it's uh I, I was I was thinking maybe so I think I, I went with high west but that actually thinking about it now that wouldn't really make sense maybe it would make more sense if I had maybe guessed like uh lock stock and barrel or something like that given you know the the age range that I was thinking of and um anyway that was it's it was good I think this is one of the one of the probably in my top four uh higher ratings that that I put down. So that's that's no idea that this was Sazerac, though. Yeah. Interesting. Brian, what'd you think of this one? Uh, this one I also had as as the fourth. Um, and I had it as a as a 79, I guess, along with Crystal. Um, this is another one where I really like the nose. This one had that same furniture polish that that I like, had a little bit of lemon zest, I guess, which goes for me with that furniture polish. Uh, but then the baking spices again. So pretty similar to that, uh, the Mickner's 10 nose that we were just talking about. Uh, but on the taste, as opposed to the Mickner's, this was more earthy. I got clove and, and black licorice. And the, the finish for me, uh, it, it built and then then it lingered. And so it it uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, maybe as I was a little uh, severe on my, on my grading here, and I'm, I don't remember why necessarily, uh, but for my notes, it sounds like I really do like it. Mm -hmm. uh, the three above the rated it above it. So I think part of putting it on it is comparing it to the others. Yeah, definitely. And, and really what I just wanted to showcase was, you know, y'all, you, you and Crystal were 50 points apart earlier. Now you're at the very same point when it comes to size rack 18. <laughs> so, yeah. It just goes to show you how whiskeys can change. Crystal, what did you think of Sazerac 18? Uh, I love yeah. the smell on this. It was very fruity on top. It was very tropical. Um, I think I mentioned like like a sugared pink grapefruit that you have for breakfast. Um, I got a lot of passion fruit. I got a lot of bright like notes on the top of it. Uh, rum raisin was something that I, I wrote down. It was a little leathery too, which I like. And the flavor, I got a lot of mango. I got that black licorice. I got like the honey cane or sugar cane, which I think like takes me back to the rum raisin. Um, the finish was sweet and lingering, but a little thin and a little dry. Yeah. Yeah. I gave this one a 79. I, I enjoyed it. it was... So here's where we're getting to the interesting part. And, and, you know, kind of how you said the, the finish was dry and I'm still convinced tasting dry notes blind is just, it, it's difficult because then when you taste it, looking at the bottle, you realize it's 18 years old. You're like, Oh man, that's a masterpiece. Uh, so next up is number three, which is sample BL with a average score of 82.25. BL is really Van Winkle family <laughs> reserve ride. So, you know, you could just go grab one at your local liquor store for probably a cool thousand dollars or so. And uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, if people ask me what's my favorite whiskey, it's getting mentioned. So um, it's interesting to see. So um, Jonah, you actually had the highest rating on this one. So, but you did say you were stumped on it and yeah. you couldn't quite figure out what you, what you thought, but I did like um, the, uh, the tasting note you put in there. It, what's it, Manish? Manish for, for all my fellow Jews out there, yeah, I'm, getting, so, uh, <laughs> I'm going to steal that tasting note because I'm like, oh, that's so perfect for a lot of different rise that I taste because uh, I've had it before. I'm like, man, that really fits in. So, so talk about this one a little bit. So I, I was I at I was kind of at first thinking that I really liked it, uh, but I was thinking that maybe it was a. Uh, uh, that it was a rye, uh, a, a, a higher proof rye though. I was thinking I was, I think ulti ultimately my guess was maybe the lock, stock and barrel or, or, or one of the Cooper spirits, uh, higher proofed rise. Um, I was getting some real, uh, uh, sweetness on the nose, some, some nice almond notes, uh, on the palate. um, uh, sort of bitter roots, uh, kind of maybe like if you're walking through a, a shop in Chinatown and you're kind of smelling those those bitter roots and herbs, kind of that kind of 
flavor. And then the Manischewitz thing is sort of this intense, sweet uh, grape flavor with a little bit of like a weird funky sourness to it. That's that's why I thought of the Manischewitz. Um, you know, did not have any clue that this would be Van Winkle, but um, I gave it an 86. I liked it a lot. Um, and yeah, again, another very interesting reveal. So yeah, which, you know, 86 puts in that really good category of, you know, really good. Everyone should have a bottle. I agree. Right. Everyone should have a bottle. Of Van Winkle Rye. <laughs> yeah. For my stand on is, you know, everyone should have a bottle of Van Winkle Rye. <laughs> so, Next time you should just send out full bottles for, of this instead yeah, of yeah. samples. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once I, once I hit the uh, lottery, that will definitely happen. Right. Uh, <laughs> is that going to be your gift for all the bourbon R's next year? Yep. Yep. Every yep. single email subscriber will receive a <laughs> bottle of the Perfect. Van Winkle. <laughs> and you know, High West is doing it. You got to do it. Yeah. The, uh, the drunken promises made on the bourbon or blind tastings. <laughs> All right, Crystal, what'd you think of this one? Because you actually had it rated a little bit lower. So I'm interested to hear what you thought, but all the flavor notes make it sound like something I really want to drink. So yeah, sometimes when I go back and I read my notes, I'm like, why didn't I like that again? <laughs> Cause I don't love it. I don't love it. Um, I, I do like, I do really like the nose on it. I got that almond, um that funky sour weird grapefruit or grapefruit note you're talking about i think i attributed it to kiwi i put kiwi in there i put red berries in there because it is it's kind of tart and it's, it's an interesting fruit i think i actually i wrote persimmons in the book i don't know if i put those on my notes uh that i sent you um it was a little astringent to me yet it had this rich and buttery texture to it. Um, it was a little minty and cooling and a little ashy. Um, yeah, I gave it a 75. I, 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 I didn't love it. And honestly, tasting it still like knowing it's, it's Van Winkle. I, I, <laughs> I don't love it. I wish I did. <laughs> Which I think that's kind of an interesting thing because, you know, um, this, while it says 13 years on the bottle, uh, you know, it's rumored to be more like 16 to 18 years. I think it's old medley or something like that. Yeah, I think it's old medley. Um, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments. Um, but, you know, it just is interesting to see how flavors and uh, that kind of thing hit people differently. Um, so, Eric, what do you think? You actually had this rated fairly highly in your uh in your lineup so surprised by the van winkle rye a little bit uh because i had just told a guy that it's overrated um like less than 20 <laughs> or 24 hours after i tried it um but no this i rated this the second highest um and i i like that the, the finish is what sold me on it it was a super long finish um i thought it was well balanced um you know, it wasn't overpowering in the spice, um, which I found a lot of that. That tends to happen with some rye. Not knowing that it was a rye, though, um, I still liked it. Um, I didn't. I didn't really get anything that was bad out of it, uh, but I didn't get anything that was just everyone's got to have this bottle. You know. Yeah. So looking at what you just you know revealed to us, I think I'm still confident in telling the guy that it's overrated, <laughs> but it's still good. At are we talking at retail prices? Or are we talking at secondary prices? Oh, retail, retail. I'd probably pick one up. Secondary, no, and I'd buy a kitchen table instead. So, just so anyone watching this knows, uh, Eric many times in Jacksonville has told me, Hey, this was several years ago. Hey, they're charging hundred dollars for a stag. I'm not paying that much. You can go buy it if you want to. <laughs> or, you know, he did it on a, he's done on pretty much any antique collection pick over the years. Of, <sighs> well, they are way overcharging at $110. I'm like, cool, I'll go grab it. So, <laughs> yeah, I left <laughs> eight stags in 2014, left eight stags on the table for you. Yeah, I'm kicking myself yeah, I appreciate now. that one. Gone are the days of Mr. MSRP. Yeah. All right, Brian. So this is actually uh, so me and Brian had talked about doing a rye tasting a long time ago, man. This was six or seven months ago, and I was like, 
yeah, you know, I'd love to have you be a part of it. So I tried to sneak him in, hoping he wouldn't figure out that I this not. was the rye tasting <laughs> we taste talked about like eight months ago. So what'd you think of the Van Winkle rye? Uh, this, I had one point lower uh, than Jonas. So I had this at 85. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I loved how, it, just seeing how dark it was and how it uh, stuck to the glass. I, I knew it was going to be, I, I, I was hoping it was going to be something good. I got this uh, grassiness and, and leather and, and cinnamon and, and spice and some tart fruit in the nose. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, it was it had this earthy clove uh, richness that I liked in the, in the flavors. What I wrote uh, on the bitterness was some old coffee bitterness, but it really didn't bum me out either. Um, but I, I, so I usually don't like that bitterness, but the, the old coffee bitterness was, was all right. Um, and the, the finish was fine. I was hoping for something longer out of it. 85, I, I definitely, definitely liked it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's no denying it's, it's a great, I, I thought I would like it more, um, you know, knowing yeah. what the reveal is now. That's the thing is, um, should people be paying 900 to a thousand dollars for this, this whiskey? I think everyone sampled it and would say, yeah you're wasting your money but you know that's that's kind of the uh the age we live in 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 today's bourbon so um all right let's go with um number two which is uh so number two is sample bw with an average rating of 82.75 so half a point higher than the van winkle rye 82.75 is mm. E.H. Taylor straight rye. I said E.H. Taylor. <laughs> I said single barrel, but I still said E.H. Taylor. There, there were a couple Sorry, really very, good, yes. very good uh, calls, yes. calls in this tasting. So, Crystal, go ahead. Let's talk about this. What gave it away that it was E.H. Taylor? I, uh, I got, okay. So, I, I, I love E.H. Taylor. I love E.H. Taylor. Um, the small batch, like every time I see it, I'll grab as many bottles or is on the shelf. Like single barrels I'm a little bit more weary of because, you know, single barrels. Um, but I always get like this pineapple and chocolate on an E.H. Taylor. And that's what I picked up on this was it was it was roasted pineapple. So not like not where it's like that really stinging pineapple, but like where the sugars have started to caramelize just a touch kind of sweet pineapple to it. And it was kind of meaty and a lot of vanilla and like milk chocolate. Um, I got it was, it was a little uh, astringent on the nose. I got a little bit of like those nose stinging spices from it, which is why I should have thought it was a rye. <laughs> um but i i loved it i gave this one an 82 um the taste was you know those those baking spices the cinnamon the ginger rye caraway um custard i like to use custard a lot in my words um it was herbal and minty and full we had a nice spicy finish to it yeah this was this was one of my um my top ones and yay i knew it was an eh <laughs> so so part of the reason why i love doing this is because reading all these notes knowing what it is knowing you've tasted blind so you had the taste is peppery cinnamon ginger clove caraway and rye and it's like oh my gosh she's like right on it and then it's like and it's then i don't even say yeah. rye <laughs> but you you know i think your mind still plays tricks on you a little bit of like <laughs> I think it was really that. set in bourbon, so I'm thinking bourbons with rye content. Yeah, or, you yeah. know. So, so, Jonah, you also had uh, you, you said high rye bourbon, so you picked up a lot of the bourbon, or excuse me, a lot of the rye in this um, five to six year old range. Um, so, what'd you think of this one? Because I feel like your your tasting notes are pretty spot on as well with this. I, I mean, I agree with a lot of the notes that Crystal was just saying, um, especially when you're talking about the uh, sort of uh, burnt 
uh, I think burnt fruit kind of flavor that you were talking about, uh, grapefruit maybe were you saying? Roasted pineapple. Roasted pineapple, <laughs> yes, that's that's a good, so I am I'm I was getting a little hot. First of all, I also, love, this is one of my favorite ryes. I had, I had no idea that this is what it is and I think I was guessing uh, something like a wild turkey uh, Decades or Master's Keep or something like a high rye bourbon that was you know on the on the uh, age, but I, I again that doesn't quite go with what I put in the tasting note in the four to five year range. But anyway, um, uh, I, I was a little hot on my on the tongue. I was getting um, that rye spice, uh, some grapefruit notes, uh, a burnt orange, uh, sort of uh, you know tasting it now and getting some marzipan in there too. But the the burnt orange definitely is is still leaping out at me. Um, uh, almost like the smell of when, you know, someone lights a match under a, under a, a twist of orange when they're making a cocktail and that, yeah, that kind of a note. So, um, this, this was my, I think this is my highest rated, uh, one out of all of them. And, uh, um, I do, you know, it, it's funny cause I, I was almost going to give it a higher rating, but when I was reading the 91 to 95 and, I would be willing to spend whatever it takes to get a bottle. I I don't know if there's any whiskey that I'm willing to spend whatever it takes to get a bottle. So I had to go a little below that. So, but, but I but I really love this one. So yeah. The good news is you wouldn't have to spend all that much to do whatever it takes, um, which is kind of like why I like this one being in here. Um, yeah. Eric, what'd you think of this one? Because you actually had the lowest rating here, so you weren't a fan. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of the the guys on this call, I mean, I'm looking at the looking at my notes here, and I'm kind of wondering why I put that number. But <laughs> you know, I, I got the I got floral on the nose, like dark floral, uh, probably like you know, chocolate covered raspberries or something. And just to preface this, I'm I'm more of the the guy who rates things based off the number of reallys that I have. So like, if it's good, I give it four reallys. So. Um, <laughs> But, so uh, how many really was this? Two? Was it? Uh, two, two and three quarters. <laughs> yeah. But so I got a lot really, of really. cinnamon um, off of it. And I, I got that it, a lot of rye uh, on the taste. So I could taste that it was a rye. Um, probably didn't write that down. I probably called it tangy toenails or something like that because I have my own thoughts on guesses too. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was decent. I rated it as a 77. So. Um, which is that's my third highest. So it's pretty it's a tough grader. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough. Yeah. Um, you should see the uh, the emails I get from him on correcting my grammar on bourbon or blog post. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, you had the highest rating with this. Yeah, this this was my number one with a with a ninety. Um, it uh, I. I, I thought the nose was was subtle um it i thought it was lower proof than than it is than i know that it is now um and i guess that's part of its subtleties but i got oak and leather <coughs> on on the nose which i really like um and i and i always like when the flavors are bigger than the nose and that's what i got here i got the, the subtle nose but then i got this big robust this rye spice, this black pepper, this earthiness on, on the flavors. Um, I got the nice lingering finish and this, this checked all the boxes for me. And, uh, I had no idea. Um, and my mindset was on, on bourbon. And so I was about as far away from a high rye bourbon and, you know, thinking, looking back at this now, I can't imagine why, but, um, why I didn't pick up more of these as, as being rye and some of them not even high rye bourbons, but it, this checked all the boxes for me. Really, really enjoyed it. Which I think, you know, you, you get a lot of more of these uh, traditional rye whiskeys, which, yeah, they're probably around the 60 to 65% rye, you know, more of that Kentucky rye, not the MGP 95%. I think it just comes across as, uh, you know, more of a high rye bourbon, a spicier bourbon. It doesn't just exactly kick you as much as you think it does whenever you're drinking, looking at the bottle, saying that it's rye whiskey. Um, but it's interesting to see. This was one I'm glad did well because um, it's one that I love. And for whatever reason, just doesn't get a ton of attention, I would say. Um, you, you know, I, it's one that's on an availability scale. I'd put it at 
Yeah, probably a seven because you can find it most if you look stores and you know it's not just crazy rare so uh but it's not sitting on the shelf like a jim Beam ride either so i think it's one more searching out so it comes with final a cool oh, go ahead comes with a cool tube yeah, yeah. that's even better it's you know, all about the packaging man marketing <laughs> and packaging orphan yeah. barrel tells you that <laughs> <laughs> all right so number one <clears throat> probably won't come as a surprise to most of you but it is sample mk with an average score of 83.5 and so um that is pikesville rye from heaven hill distillery and that's one where i thought i i can't say i'm shocked that it's number one i thought it would for sure be in the top three i didn't think it would be number one but um it's definitely one where I think was a slam dunk release from Heaven Hill a few years back whenever they released it. You know, initially I kind of thought, you know, they're basically just taking um, the uh, written house and a couple of years to it and dropping the proof, or excuse me, increasing the proof 110 to 110. Um, but, you know, it's one where once I tasted it, I was like, wow, this is this is something pretty good um so let's go in order so, so crystal tell us your thoughts on this one um so i gave it a 77. Uh, i wasn't crazy i wasn't i wasn't crazy about it but i did enjoy it um like i may have mentioned a moment earlier custardy tends to be a word that that comes to mind um, and I think that's because of the, the rye itself. Again, to me, it can be kind of like rich and oily. Maybe that's where that custardy comes from. But I got a lot of almonds on it. It smelled high proof to me. Um, I put vanilla extract. It was very nose warming and astringent. I do pick up a really nice caramel tone and maybe like some grapes. Mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the palate, it was a little medicinal, a little licorice. Uh, it was oaky. Uh, the, the finish was really nutty to me. I got a really nice coconut on the end of it. So, yeah. yeah no, I, I mean, in there. Oh, the buttercream is, frosting. That was the one note I was looking for. No, you kind of had me at buttercream frosting. Anything described as buttercream frosting, I'm like, yeah, I'll drink, <laughs> I'll drink a gallon of that. <laughs> but um, it, it's interesting to see how the scores were pretty tight on this one and still you just get a lot of those notes of, and you know, I kind of have the advantage of uh, seeing everyone else's notes. We'll post them, but a lot of people hitting those spicy notes, the caramel notes, the vanilla notes, that kind of stuff. Um, but not necessarily leaning towards a rye, still leaning more towards a high rye bourbon. So uh, Eric, you actually said four rows of store pick. Yeah. Um, so what'd you think on this one? I think I wanted it to be a four row, four rows of store pick just cause I have so many of them, but, uh, I really liked it. Um, this was my highest ranking one. Um, I thought it had a great nose. Um, I got a lot of floral notes off of it. Um, the taste, it was a, a full cherry, dark cherry taste to me. Um, I thought the finish was fully balanced. I mean, all the way through. It, it was great. Uh, had a long finish on it. And, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I thought I knew what the initials were on the bottle. Maybe it's because I wanted it to be a Four Roses barrel pick. I don't know. But it was great. Um, luckily, I know where like four bottles are and they're priced good. So I have a job tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So MK was not a Four Roses indication. Miles Kent was not, I promise. All right. So, Brian, you there. actually also said uh four roses pick yep i went with the high rye i said this was a obs v uh, uh private selection uh, so i went with that high rye recipe of it uh, i love this this was my second favorite and i liked the finish more than i did on than than my favorite which was the eh taylor because this one has um what i refer to always that gear shift in the in the finish 
um, where you, you, you're you feeling the finish and then it, it changes on you. And this one has that. <coughs> mm -hmm. now, now that with this reveal, back when I did this a year ago, um, Pikesville was basically neck and neck with the with the Willet 25 year that I'm that I'm finishing tonight. It surprised me then has continued to surprise me and it stops me that Pikesville is top of the heap. Um, yeah, and it's, it's you, you see it on the shelves. Uh, it's it's worth getting, guys. Yeah, yeah so and I, I think that's one that always falls in everyone should have a bottle. But, um, yeah, it's good. So, so uh, Jonah, you also had it rated as an 86. So what did you think of this one? Um, it's been a really long time since I've had Pikesville. Um, I, I, I like it a lot. Um, this was also the uh, – I think this was the first sample that I tasted during my uh, tasting marathon. So I was – really enthusiastic when I, you know, starting out with this one. Um, uh, I agree with Eric, what he was saying about the, how it, it tastes like a really balanced whiskey. Um, I'm getting a very uh, sweet oaky nose. So my, my uh, uh, guess was actually, it just reminded me of, of this year's birthday bourbon. Uh, and the reason is because I was getting, when I tasted that, I was getting real strong cherry and grape candy notes. And, and that's the kind of the same thing that I was getting here with a little bit of that dry spice behind it. Um, really nice oily mouthfeel. Um, no idea that this was Pikesville. Uh, didn't even really place it as a rye or even necessarily a high rye, uh, high rye bourbon. Uh, but this was, I guess, tied with uh, Van Winkle as my, uh, uh, in second place for me. So um, yeah, I think Pikesville is great. And, and I'm kind of pleased that that's what this was because it's, it's really good. And we can get it. And, yeah, and exactly. It's always, it's always <laughs> nice whenever you know you have a high recommendation like this, where it's like, oh, most likely you can find a bottle. So, uh, how, how much are you seeing? How much are you seeing Pikesville for? Where, where I think we're are? paying like Eric. What are we paying here? Forty-five to fifty bucks. It's okay. like mid fifties, I think. Okay, that's Maybe somewhere in New York, I think. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a the, the store that I know it's at. It's kind of a higher price store though, too. But I'm not going to say the store on here because I mean. I feel like in Ohio, it's, it's we're like close now, though. 60, 65 for a bottle of Pikesville. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, that's what yeah. I feel like controlled states have a disadvantage there. Um, but even, I mean, I would still say at 65 bucks. I think everyone's I pick a bottle. Bad. Yeah. I'll I'll buy buy Kentucky this weekend, so I'll buy a bottle there. Too <laughs> steep. <laughs> Too steep. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it, everyone. So that wraps up all the tasting notes and reviews from the Bourboner episode number four, Blind Tasting. Um, before we leave, let's go around and just let, let's say your biggest surprise, um, other than Van Winkle <coughs> not being the top uh, top one. So we'll kind of go uh, the reverse order. So Jonah, from this episode, what was your biggest surprise when re reviewing the reveal? I think for me, it would be the uh, baby Sazerac uh, the, that I was just getting these these weird Irish whiskey cider cask finished whiskey notes on, and and to to you know be, that kind of blew me away to find out what what that was, and um, and also I think just in general about this is the first blind tasting I've done, and just in general, I you know it makes me you know you you think about. Well, maybe there's, you could look at it as, as saying, well, you know, you, you're influenced by what the label and what you're seeing, what you know it is, but maybe that's also just, you know, part, part of drinking whiskey too. Like maybe that's a legitimate yeah. part of, you know, you read the bottle, you know what it is and, and it's influencing the way you're tasting it. And so it's interesting to sort of think about the, the two sides of that. So, yeah. And that's a good point. You know, I, th I think it really is a part of it, like the appreciation side of, knowing what's in the bottle, what went into it, you know, how old it is, how, you, you know, you think about something like the, the, uh, even the Sazerac 18. So that was tanked for, I think it was like 10 years. So you're thinking about something that was distilled and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but it was sometime around the early eighties. And so there's a much higher level of appreciation for something like that when you're looking at it and tasting it, as opposed to just tasting it blind. Um, right. So really, you know, I, I love these blind tastings, but 
you know, maybe just don't spend as much money as you would. <laughs> is, you, you know, is kind of my takeaway from this. Yeah, go try it at a bar, enjoy it, have fun. But um, yeah, that that's generally my takeaway. Eric, biggest surprise? Uh, the biggest surprise is that the wreath is gone. Um, I don't see that. <laughs> so <laughs> the uh, Reber household is going uh, under what do we call this? Uh, time to move cleaning. Yeah. So most decorations are gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So I I think that the biggest surprise was the Saz eighteen. I mean, just my my guess on it was so far off um, on it, and so even revisiting it, I don't I wouldn't change my notes on it. So. I think that's probably the biggest surprise just because how talked up it is and how much I hear people say that it's just the bees knees. And, you know, I haven't had many pours of it, but um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest surprise um, followed by a close second is that Pikesville, you know, there's a local guy here that just screams Pikesville and says it's, it's awesome. I never believed him. Um, now I'm going to have to shake his hand and say, Hey, you were right. Although that's going to pain me a little bit. <laughs> All right, Crystal, what would you think through this blind tasting was the biggest surprise? My biggest surprise was that I actually came close on one. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, is the biggest surprise. Actually, I think my biggest surprise is that I liked Bullet Rye the best, which I love that because I'm always about value. I'm always trying to find what's the best value. Like, it doesn't have to be the most prestigious bottle. It just has to be the one that I like at the price that I want to pay for it. Um, yeah, I love doing blind tastings. Luckily with uh, bourbon club, I get to do it once a month with them. And then, you know, like kind of heading up the, the Lizardville location, I get to try new stuff all the time and I don't have to invest my money <laughs> into trying some of these. So I luckily have had Sazerac 18 probably the last five years in a row that it's been released. So I already know that I, like, I'm not super in love with it, and I, it's not something that I've needed. So that I, I mean, I scored it a 79, and we have a 78 for it. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy with my notes. I had a lot of fun doing this, and like I do, I love blind tastings. And, yeah, I got, I got close on one, so that's exciting. <laughs> Very good. All right, Brian, wrap us up here. Biggest surprise. Sure. Uh, biggest surprise on on the on the bottles probably is the Knob Creek. I, I thought it was better than third to the bottom. I ranked it um, third to the bottom, and the average was third to the bottom. And I always thought that was was good for the value. Um, Pikesville, like I say, shouldn't surprise me anymore. I suppose it still does, but it's it's a it's a strong buy, and. And then most surprising overall is how off I was on all of these as far as guessing <laughs> brands. And as Blake saw in my notes, I just sort of stopped. Um, I mean, I just I said the bad ones were all craft and I had some uh, way off bourbon guesses on some of these. And then I just stopped. And that's part of what's great about doing the blind. It really doesn't matter what it is. It matters whether you like it or not. And it, uh, and, and that's really what helps you figure it out. So I, I appreciate being part of this. Very good. Well, thank you all for participating. Like I said at the beginning, you know, subjecting yourself to this kind of, uh, not necessarily criticism, but just, you know, put, putting it out there, putting your tasty notes, um, talking about it and putting your rankings. So it's always fun to do this. Once again, thank you everyone for listening. This is the Bourboner Blind Tasting Episode 4, the Rye Whiskey Tasting. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. All right. Thank That's you. The, uh, Thanks.